Hello everyone, my name is Alex and this is episode 25 of the Chess.com Rapid Rating Climb series where we are pushing for at least 2000 ELO, which is more representative of my over the board classical ELO. In this series we basically just play online rapid games, I talk you through my thought process while we play and then in the post game analysis I can go more in depth over some of the lines that I was calculating so it's easier for you guys to visualize and just speak more in depth about the opening ideas or middle game principles, end games if we get to an end game. Basically just trying to educate you guys and hopefully you can improve as a result of that or just find it at least like entertaining. So that's the basis. And our opponent plays the Sicilian defense. If you have been around the channel before, you know what I'm going to play. And my mouse is hovering over the pawn that I want to move to A3. The A3 Sicilian. Yes, this is a line that is recommended by Gotham Chess in his E4 course. And our opponent plays into one of the gambit lines. I will go more over this in the post-game analysis. We'll talk a little bit more in depth. But this will also be added to a playlist because I have a specific playlist for videos in which I play this particular opening because I believe it is so good and so underrated. People don't really know about it. And the whole point is I'm going to sacrifice my A and B pawn for a C pawn because I want him to take my B pawn with the bishop. And then we are going to play C3 with tempo and D4 to take an absolutely massive center for the cost of one pawn. So C3. I'm expecting bishop to e7, which I, I, I believe bishop f8 is actually the better move uh, in some scenarios. Just because g7 can become quite weak after a move like queen g4 in a lot of cases, especially if we can push e5 to stop the knight from coming to f6. So, okay. Now the move here is d4. We take the full center. And d5 is the most natural move for black because in the Sicilian kind of the whole point is to try and play d5 and in most cases if black can play d5 in the Sicilian he's good. This is not a normal Sicilian though we want this we are now going to play e5 and now look how difficult it is for him to develop we have such a strong control over the dark squares in the position this bishop doesn't really have any moves e7 is where his knight wants to develop because the f6 square is unavailable and he plays knight to c6 so like i mentioned you know literally like a minute ago the idea is to play queen to g4 to attack this pawn and black is in some trouble now because normally a lot of the well a lot of the time the knight goes to f6 anyway which stops queen to g4 but knight f6 can also be played in response to queen g4 trying to bait white to take on g7 and play rook to g8 with the knight defending not only the h7 pawn but the rook and yeah in this position black i, I, I will go over this in the post game analysis black can play king f8 to defend the pawn he can play bishop back to f8 and then try and bring the knight to e7 and then onto the light squares but he chooses g6 and this is very weakening of his dark squares but we can't immediately take advantage of it really because this knight does kind of monitor the dark squares however it also can't develop i would not be surprised if our opponent tries to reroute his bishop and bring his knight to e7 but that's going to take a whole lot of time and he's going to have wasted like one, two, three, four moves with the bishop, which is a lot. And if the bishop does step over here, we could potentially try and take advantage of like the d6 square, for example, which is a common idea in this opening. So with that being said, we need to develop bishop d3, very common idea. We're trying to discourage moves like h5, f6 and f5 because we're trying to set up potential sacrifices on g6 if black attempts to do that he goes bishop f8 i mean this is just very sad from from black it just looks really sad bishop g5 is a move but black can probably just move the queen our bishop isn't actually doing that much i think we can just leave it on c1 for now 
This is in the back of my mind, but with the bishop still patrolling the d6 square, I don't want to commit to that yet. If knight a3, knight e7, knight b5, knight f5, he covers the d squick, d squicks, <laughs> the d6 square quite well. So I think it makes sense for us just to develop with knight to f3. This knight might be trying to come to g5 to again try and team up with the bishop and queen to take advantage of the light squares. Okay, bishop g7 is very committal. If we go knight a3 now, I don't actually know how black intends on stopping this because the problem is, for, well not for me but for black, after knight a3, a6 does not work because we play knight b5 anyway. And part of the idea of this opening, sacrificing the A and B pawns, is to open this rook up. So if he plays A6 and we just go knight B5, he can't really take because we're going to take his rook. And if our knight gets to D6 with check, there's going to be some major problems. Major, major problems in the black position. It's a very dangerous opening to face the A3 Sicilian, especially because... You know, as I'm talking to you guys, I'm explaining ideas that I use quite often. Like I said, d5 is the most natural move, but it's not that good. I only know that because I play the opening all the time, because I love it. Knight e7. We can go knight b5. If he tries to go knight to f5 to guard d6, we're just going to take it. I'm more than happy to trade off my bishop to get a knight into the position like that. His idea might be knight b5 and castle. That might be what he's going for. We can still go into d6. Are we threatening anything? No. No, he does get his king out of the center. So this is... Playing h4 is kind of tempting. But... I'm going to play knight b5. And he's, he, I mean, he has to castle. He's got to. I mean, he could play knight f5. And after bishop takes, pawn takes, I do have to move my queen. So say queen g3, and then he could castle. But I feel like trading off the light square bishop is actually good for us. Because with the position like as closed as it is, the knight, the advantage of having a knight for a bishop should actually be good. So now he castles, and now I kind of want to play h4, because our knight can come to d6 at any time. Again, if this knight ever steps to f5, we're just going to take it. We could also play bishop to a3, which is one of my other ideas, just to put a significant amount of pressure on. And if this rook moves out of the pin, then knight d6 has a little bit more venom, because f7 is far weaker with the rook on e8 rather than f8. I also just realized our knight will be attacking the rook from d6 if the rook moves to e8. So this is very tempting. And a6, we can just throw the knight in. But we can also play a move like bishop c5 to open the pin back up. Okay, there's a lot of options here. We do have a lot of options. Again, h4 is a move. And if we can get h5 in, I'm very confident we can win this. But after h4, I'm expecting h5 from my opponent. Queen to g3. I don't know whether that favours us or not. Because we kind of give him a move. Because h5 comes with a tempo on our queen. So... We can play h4 at any time. Let's start with bishop a3. Let's start with this. I'm just going to pin the knight. Moves like queen a5 are not intimidating. We just castle. And then the bishop is no longer pinned to the rook because our f rook will be defending it. And you might say, why would you castle? Like, isn't your idea to push the h pawn? Well, yes, but priorities shift. Yes, yeah, so and now he does that. But this is going to come with tempo on the rook now. Hmm. Is he good with that? We could again go h4. I 
I'm going to play knight d6. I like the move knight d6, not only because it comes with tempo, but also because it controls f5, which is where he kind of wants to put a knight. So I can choose to take with a knight or a bishop. And we have pressure on the bishop and the pawn. So moves like bishop d7 are discouraged because we can take his pawn. He also just wasted two moves, essentially, with rook e8, rook f8. I think rookie eight was probably a mistake. Yes, the pin is annoying. Mm. <laughs> yes, the pin is annoying, but there's priorities. Like you can't be wasting two moves like that. But we still need to convert this. We are down a pawn. Remember, this is a gambit. Knight g5. I don't think does a whole lot. We're not threatening to take on f7. So h4 looks good to me. If we can bait out h5, maybe we can look for sacrifices on the g6 square at the right moment. So there's that to consider. He's playing well though, he's defending himself pretty well. He's making it difficult for us to actually break through the position. I have no doubt our position is better because of the way our pieces are placed. Like, we have a knight on d6 for god's sake. And this bishop is incredible. But we need to prove that this can actually convert. You know, we need to actually push for some kind of material advantage or like massive attack. So he goes h5. My first thought is to go queen to g3. Queen g5 is a move, but I think I might want to put this knight there. To put more pressure on the light squares in the position. We do also have queen f4 to try and prepare the move g4. That looks nice. If we go queen f4, king h7, trying to set up bishop h6, then we can play knight g5 with check, forcing the king back, and then go g4, and that looks crushing. So this is a very tempting move, and I don't see how black actually attacks our queen. We also put considerable pressure on the f7 pawn, which may or may not be useful. I do have to check, however, queen f4, f6, trying to play on the fact that our queen is on the f-file, as is his rook. It does look flimsy, though, because g6 is incredibly weak. If we take, and rook takes... I'm not sure. Here, here. F6 looks like a problem. See, if we drop the queen back to g3, then F6 I'm not so scared of because it doesn't come with an, a threat on the queen. And g6 is under incredible fire. But I also want to play g4. I really want to play g4. Maybe queen h3? And if f6, g4. Take. Take. Or queen h3, f6. Take, take, f6 is kind of a problem, you know, at least it feels like it is. Queen f4 is the move I want to play, but I need to make f6 not prevent it. I also need to speed up a little bit. So queen f4, f6. Can I make use of the bishop's alignment with the rook? Like, knight takes c8. He has to take back, because otherwise I'm going to take on e7 with check. So, queen c8, has or rook, rook c8, let's say. So, queen f4, f6, knight c8, rook c8. Doesn't do anything. 
what if queen h3 f6 knight c8 rook c8 isn't possible because then we take on e6 with check so queen c8 has to be played to maintain the defense then do we have anything don't think so Hmm. This is tough. This is a critical position, which is why I'm taking so long. Because this, I need to figure out. Wish I had more time. This is why I'm better suited at classical. Queen g5, f6, take. Take. g3. But here, here. And then we have no knight g5, but then we can take on h5 with check because the pawn's pinned to the king. I'm going to go queen g5. I don't know if this is the best, but mm, I don't know. It makes sense to me. I want to keep the queen on the g-file, so I wanted to go queen g3 or queen g5, but on g3, I don't allow the option of g4, which I think could be very important. So, yeah, I mean, if he goes f6 takes, bishop takes, then maybe we drop back to g3. I can't allow f6, queen drops back in f5, because that kind of shuts everything down. I don't want him to be able to shut down the kingside pressure, because this is where our advantage lies, or should lie, in this opening. This is kind of how it works. Also, if you're still watching at this point in the video, I hope you're finding it educational, or like at least entertaining. Um, if you're like 17 minutes in, I hope it it's at least one of those two and you haven't just left the tab open by accident. If you want to watch the previous episodes of the Rating Climb, there is a playlist linked below. But of course, you can just watch this episode in isolation. And hopefully we can pull this off. Um, I've got five minutes left, which is not ideal. What? What? Well, that was nothing like I was expecting. Well, I guess he's pinning the bishop and he's attacking this. We could go bishop b2 to defend the rook, defend c3 and attack the queen, but queen b6 attacks the bishop. Don't really want to go into that. I kind of just want to castle. And if queen takes c3... Knight c8, and if rook c8, then we take on e7. No, this can't be the right move. This can't be. Something's wrong. And we could play like queen c1 or queen d2 to stay solid, sure. I don't really want to do that. Our queen's put in nice pressure on the e7 knight, which I think might be the reliability in the position. I want to castle and just sack this pawn. And then knight here. Rook takes. Bishop e7. Maybe it is a good move. I just don't believe it. Queen d2 is an option. Queen c1 is an option.
We're going to take the plunge. This feels right. This feels like the right move. Yeah, we're giving up C3. But I don't believe he can take that. It seems like it's way too much to go and take. The only, like, if this bishop wasn't under attack, it would be easy. Just knight c8 and we'd win a piece. Or at least the exchange, because after knight takes, we can win the rook. But if here, 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 um, here, 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 he can take on d3. It's not so simple. Can go knight to g5 threatening f7 but then rook back to f8 there 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 don't want to play rook d1 really don't Maybe it's good. We're down two pawns. To be fair though, what does he actually do? Like, what's his move? Because we are threatening bishop c8 to win at least an exchange and get a pretty nice attack. If he goes bishop to d7, I mean we could take here but we could also play knight b5 attacking the queen and opening up the bishop's attack on the knight which is going to win us a piece. Where does his queen go? It seems like we've kind of defended everything in our position and black has wasted too many moves trying to attack our position without actually solving the problems in his own position. That's what it seems like to me. And it feels like we are now exploiting that. Again, F I really thought F6 was the idea. He could still go F6 now. Try and cut the queen's connection off. But f6, take, bishop takes, queen g3, and we've got a lot of pressure on g6. This is still not gone away. And if um, f6 takes and rook takes. Yeah, he goes for it. Okay. I mean, we have to take it. Surely. If we don't, then he's going to take us. So let's take. Maybe that was rash. I don't think so. Now we are down two pawns, so we need to try and win some material back. I don't mind being down one pawn, but like two pass pawns is a lot, especially now the C pawns disappeared, which would have been stopping the B pawn from getting through. Of course we could just run out of attack and our opponent could consolidate, but with my knight on D6 like this, and my bishop staring down, I, I don't see it. Queen here, knight here, then we take on g6. I'm playing a little bit quicker now just because I have two minutes remaining. I might not be able to explain quite as much at this point, but everything will be covered post game, so don't you worry about that. Things will not get left uncovered, stones will not be left unturned. The thing is, even if we can't win material immediately, that really what is struggling to move moves don't seem to be coming that naturally to black e6 is weak g6 is weak b7 is weak 
This diagonal is weak. This diagonal is weak. His queen is kind of stranded. Yeah, she's got eyes on a lot of things, but everything is protected. And she could just be a target with moves like knight to b5. Or maybe even like... Okay. What happens if we take? Rook takes. Here, here, he maintains defense of g6. Trying to set up a way to sack for the knight to deliver checkmate. If this knight could disappear, it'd be mate. Here, here. This? Bishop takes, pawn takes, oh my god, I'm running out of time, there has to be a way through here, there has to be. What about knight 2b5? here then we can take and if he takes bishop a fake king f okay yeah i think that works i think that works checking 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 okay we're gonna do it knight b5 could work we have too many things going on we have so much pressure building up Queen a5 also leaves um, the queen open to discovered attacks, so queen to b3. Can we trap the queen? Queen b3, knight d2, our queen defends our bishop, queen a4. Bishop e7. Is the queen getting trapped? Queen b3. The queen has no other squares, right? Queen b3. Knight d2. Queen a4. Checking everything's still defended. Yes, I think we could make the sacrifice, but... I'm sure this works. Everything seems to protect everything, just about. And also, I guess this, but. And then we're attacking the queen. d4 is protected. The queen only has a4. And then queen a4, bishop e7, game over. Again, everything is protected. I think we did it. I think we found a way through. Oh my god. Oh my god, I think this is it. <sighs> wow. I am genuinely so happy with that game. I mean, it's not technically over yet, but... Unless I just missed something glaringly obvious, I feel like he would have played it by now. If there was a, if there was a way out. I don't see what he does. Knight d2. The backwards knight moves are tough to find. Okay, it's an idea. We could just take the queen and then after takes, takes, we're up a piece. But he has a bunch of pawns. That's a tricky move. If we take... Oh, dude, why did he have to find that? Oh my god, 
I can't. I don't have enough time to think. This is not the best line. I know it's not. Because he has three extra pawns. But we should be able to convert this. That's a very nice move from him. That's a really nice find. Because yeah, the position should still be winning for us. But it's far harder for us to convert this. However, our pieces are incredibly strong. There must have been some ta something with like bishop to e7 there. There must have been. Well, I mean, we'll check it in the post-game analysis. But that's a nice move from our opponent. Wow. That was really good. Okay, let's attack. We've got a lot of pressure here. I think we should still still be able to convert this. Ah, <sighs> man, we've made it difficult for ourselves, though, huh? This is this chess at this level. They're very good. I think um, rook d8. We have knight to c7, attacking the rook and attacking e6, which will come with a four. On the king and rook. So if he brings this rook. Again we can go here. Threatening e6. And if he moves the king. Then it doesn't really matter. Because it still comes with a fork anyway. So that should clean up. Should. Let us hope. I mean, if he does this, we could also just take on b7, but... I mean, why allow that? If I can go up... Because, like, we're up a piece right now for three pawns. But if we, if we can be up a rook for three pawns, that should be easy. Oh, that makes our life easier. Because now we just have a very simple path. Yeah, so this <clears throat> this rook is under attack. Rook c8, rook b8. We take on e6 with check. Don't take the bishop first because after rook takes knight here, you don't fork the rook. So, <laughs> okay, this should... Wow, bishop h4, what a move. Bishop h4. Very impressive find from our opponent to keep the game going. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure I had a win. I'm sure we didn't play the best line. But with like no time left on the clock. I was just going to make the easy decision. And go okay. We're going to do a piece versus three pawns. And we should convert. But I mean this should be easy now. Could take the knight. Don't have to though. Let's give a check. I'm gonna. I I don't really want to trade off my bishops yet, unless we can w win a lot of material or get a ton of activity, because these knights are kind of stuck defending each other. It's called like superfluous knights. They're basically doing the same thing. Now we're gonna threaten this knight. He might go for rook to e8, and then we should be able to meet that with bishop to b5, and we have pins galore. Okay, he goes there. Stop playing good moves, man. Come on. Come on. Let me... Just let me win. Please. Okay. We're going to threaten g6 now. Because we're not able to access the 7th rank just yet. If we can win g6, then we will. I mean, we're up a rook. And yes, he has a couple pawns, but the pawns are way too far back to be causing any problems. We also have the bishop pair versus a knight pair. I mean, I don't know why I'm uh, expanding so much on this point, because we are up a rook. But sometimes you just still have to be a little bit careful, even when it should be a completely winning position. Because as I've found out many times, opponents just keep on fighting at the higher ratings. They just never stop fighting. Okay, so if he goes here, then we have a discovery tactic. If he goes back, this should be an easy win. Bishop b2. 
and the knight is pinned to the king. You can't defend the knight. I don't really know how you're going to stop mate, let alone losing the knight. And that should be game over. Should be game over. There we go. Wow. That was a crazy game. And in a crazy opening as well. I definitely made some mistakes. Definitely could have done some stuff better. But I'm happy with how I handled that position. Especially allowing the queen into c3 and believing there's no way that was good. Maybe it was. Maybe he just played inaccurately. But by no means was that a perfect game. Let's get into the analysis. Alright, so we had 89.7% accuracy compared to 78.1. Very high accuracy scores from both of us, to be fair, considering how complicated the game was. It wasn't particularly short either. So e4, c5, and a3 is the move that I like to play. Like I said, there is a playlist link below with other games I've played in this where I've expanded on the ideas of the opening. The basic idea is if knight, c4, if knight c6 is played, you do the same thing and you get this kind of position. And there's a ton of traps in this line. It's very difficult to play from the black side, especially if black doesn't know it, which is, you know, likely because what on earth is 2a3 in the Sicilian defense? But our opponent chooses the e6 line. And, you know, the computer doesn't really like this idea. But the whole point is we take a massive center, and d5 is just not a good move. I mean, like, the computer says it's good, but it's, it's not great because we have e5. And queen g4 is coming in. Knight c6, queen g4, g6 has to be played. And this is a tough position to play because there's so many holes in the black position for our bishop to exploit. And what on earth is his bishop doing? I mean, his bishop spent the entire game on c8. And then it came to d7, and then we won. Like, the moment it stepped onto d7. So it didn't really play a role in the game. Because it's so difficult to break out of this structure once you've put yourself in it. Which is part of the reason why I absolutely love this opening, because I love this pawn wedge in the centre. So bishop d3. Bishop f8 is a mistake. But I think it's a fair enough move. Computer likes moves like h4, h5, queen e2, but I don't think that's really in the spirit. I think if uh, h4, h5, queen g3 seems far more natural to me, just to maintain pressure. Now, the computer will never blunder a tactic like this, like if it works in the future, but human players might. In fact, they will. Not every single time, but they will a certain amount of the time for sure. So we went knight f3, which is still a good move. Bishop g7, and yeah, I said I didn't really like this move either, because I thought the bishop should be staying on this diagonal, which is why we went knight a3, which is the best move. And if he tries to play a move like a6, knight b5 all the same, and we're coming into d6. Black can either put the bishop back on f8 to defend d6, play king f8 preemptively. I mean, he could take, but then he'd lose a rook and lose the game. So this would be incredibly difficult for black to handle. So he chooses knight g7, knight b5, and he castles quickly so that we don't have knight d6 with check. Bishop a3 is apparently a blunder. We should castle here. The computer doesn't like bishop a3 f6, but why is f6 not as good in this position? After takes takes... I right, kind of likes bishop g5, queen g3. I think the whole point is that bishop g5 is on the cards. Whereas when we put it on a3, if f6 is played, and we take and rook takes, I guess there's no, there's no bishop g5 at any point. Still queen g3. I'd still probably prefer this position with white, especially if we can keep a good grip of the e5 square to stop him from playing e5. But f6 is definitely a big idea in a lot of these um, lines. Rook e8, though, is strange. Because knight d6, rook has to go back to f8. He's just wasted two moves. And we've improved our position with bishop to a3 and knight d6. Then h4, h5. And we put our queen on g5. Now, the computer does mildly prefer queen f4, which is what I wanted to do. But I was worried about f6. 
apparently you drop back to g3. The i4 you had to take, but I guess if you take on e5, knight takes e5. Remember, this, this uh, knight is defended by the bishop, so there's no problems. Knight e5, d e5, g6 is very weak. This isn't playable because the pawn hangs. King h7 defending the pawn. The computer just wants to... Well, actually queen g5 to threaten queen h5 because the pawn is pinned. Knight f5. Ah, now g4. And if this, then you take on d8. Wait. If knight f5, g4, can he not just trade queens? Oh, the knight hat. So what if he just moves the knight? What if he just takes? Oh, then we kind of crash through. Even though we um don't have queens, this is still a pretty devastating attack with our bishops, our pawns, and our rook. It's not very human to want to trade queens off, though. So I chose queen g5. Queen a5 is an inaccuracy. I was expecting f6. Apparently this is bad, though. You take, and after rook f6, you have knight e5. No? What about bishop f6? And you just queen back to g3. This is what I was going to play. This was my plan. I didn't know how good it was, but this was what I wanted to do. And the computer blesses it, so... That's cool, but I don't think it's obvious how we're getting through. It's certainly a better position, though. And a big reason, I think, is because this knight has so much pressure alongside the bishop. And bishop d7 can never be played, really. Well, not only because g6 hangs, but imagine g6 wasn't hanging. We can just take on b7 with an attack on the queen. Queen b8. Knight comes back to d6. And all the problems remain in the position for black, except he just lost his extra pawn. So he's not even up material. So queen a5, and yeah, I did consider queen d2 and queen c1, and the computer does like those moves, but it prefers castling and allowing the queen into c3. So I'm very happy I decided to do that. I just did not believe he could take in good conscience. And yeah, rook fd1 is the move. Let's go. That's a nice find. Only move to really hold a big advantage. The point is, like, how is the queen getting out? The queen has no way out. It came to a5 under the precondition that my bishop could only go to b2 to maintain defense of the rook. And then the queen could just retreat. Now the queen can't go to a5 because we take on c8 and then we take on e7. And the queen is now under attack because my rook defends the other rook. That wasn't the case when the queen entered the position. So the queen is basically stuck. f6 is the best move though. We take inaccuracy queen e3 is better and if you take then this whole knight b5 thing and if you take queen e2 and you just claim that his queen has no escape which makes sense but we took on f6 bishop takes f6 so this is a miss queen h6 is the move but I thought he could just go queen, sorry, uh, bishop g7, then queen e3. I don't really see the difference between that and queen g3. What? Knight d4? Knight d4, queen d4, aligning the queen with the uh, rook? Knight c8, rook c8. Can we not pull off some kind of discovery? No, because h4 hangs. Ah, that's the difference. I mean, okay, that's difficult to spot though, because if h4 wasn't hanging, so like bishop g6, if h4 wasn't hanging, then like, what does he do? Apparently he goes rook c3. Okay, yeah, true. Attacks the queen. But this is very difficult to see. And he chose king g7. 
which is a logical looking move, but yeah, I guess that just fa fails to knight b5. What about queen to h6? Why can't he take this now? Knight d4. If queen d4, then this comes with a threat of checkmate, which is a difference. And if bishop d4, knight c8, ah, and he has to take with the rook. Then bishop e7. There is things on f2, but I guess I just go to h1 and I'm good. Very complicated. But he goes king g7, which is natural, but then knight b5. And I took a very, very long time on this move. I did consider bishop g6. Um, in that order. I f I'm sure I considered some kind of bishop g6 move. Well, bishop e5? Excuse me? I mean, the point is, if you take with the knight, knight f5 check, e f5. I was, I was going to go knight b5. But then queen c2 defends the knight. Wow. I don't know whether I would have found this in, under such low time. So maybe knight b5, well, knight b5 is the better move anyway. Because there is no queen c2 now because the bishop is still on the board. And the queen has no way out. If the queen goes to a5, then we just take on e7 and it's game over. So he goes to b3. And we go knight d2, which is apparently not even that good. Rook a b1. But then, what about this? Ah, then we just go for this idea. Okay. Did it, if I had more time, maybe I'd find this. But knight d2 isn't actually that good because of bishop h4, which is a great find, like fantastic find. Bishop e7 doesn't work because he takes on d1 with check. Rook d1, bishop g3, bishop f8, king f8, f g6, and we're up a port. Sorry, we're up a piece for free pawns. So similar to the end game that we went into, except I guess we lack a bit of activity. After bishop h4, knight b3 is the best move. So I'm glad I found that at least. Bishop g3, fg3, and bishop d7 does allow knight c5. This is such a tough position to play for black though, because we have so much pressure. You can't blame him for wanting to develop a bishop. But yeah, knight c5 attacks the bishop. If the bishop drops back to c8, then we have the same idea with knight c7 attacking the rook and threatening knight e6 with a fork. So, knight c5, rook fd8, knight c7. If he brought the other rook, then knight c7 anyway. It's not the best move. I could take on b7 first, like I mentioned but I think this is the cleanest and simplest way to go about it, because what do you do? Rook f6, knight d7, rook d7, oh, knight e8, that is brutal. And yeah, again, you get to the position where you're just a rook up. But we do it this way. Take, 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 and rook f1, king g7. We can take on e7, which the computer likes, but... I thought rook a to e1 was very practical because it kind of freezes the black position. If rook d7 is played to defend, again we have rook e6 and g6 is very weak. We can maybe even go rook to f6 after, a, if he does nothing, rook ff6 or even rook ef6 to try and access the 7th rank. This is very, very rough. I mean, we're up a rook, you know. We can't lose this, but... Knight c8, rook e6 is very accurate because he can't really defend the g6 pawn. Knight d4, and we just have mate in 5 with rook g6, king h8, bishop b2, and it's game over. He can't defend the knight. The king is going to have to come up to h7. And this is checkmate with the rooks and the bishops absolutely slaughtering the black king. Very interesting game. If you made it till the end of the video, thank you very much for sticking around. And if you enjoyed and you're not already subscribed to the channel, then please do so you can get notified when my next videos come out, which, I mean, it is every single day to be fair. So 
you can count on that regardless. <laughs> you don't need to put notifications on, to be fair, but hey, you might as well if you enjoy the content. But that's the game. I think it's a very nice showcase of the power of the A3 Sicilian when your opponent doesn't fall into the opening traps. You can just get such a dominant position. And don't get me wrong, it's not completely winning or anything. We had to work really hard and we slipped up a couple times, but everyone slips up. And he and my opponent slipped up more than me. Because Jess is difficult, you know? 15 minutes per player is not enough to figure out an entire game. I mean, no, no amount of time is in reality. Anyway, I'll start waffling. If you want to check out the previous episodes, check the playlist below, and I'll see you in the next one.